From roid rage to aggression, we've seen it all on the show. And this one right here was so upsetting that you'd be left thinking about it for days. Okay. Can, can you read something? Okay, so this is like no episode I've ever seen before. And it's not just me. The entire production crew for the first time had caught a very unusual person. No doubt this guy was weird, but there was something very crucial that he was hiding. Did he perhaps carry a dangerous weapon? Sammy, a member of the production team, stumbled across a potential candidate for the show when a 27-year-old man named Pepe popped up on her chat box. Right off the bat, Pepe seemed to be extremely weird. First off, his chat was gibberish. The entire team had to actually sit together and brainstorm just to make sense of what he meant to say. It looks like this guy was gonna be a handful, but nothing prepared the team for what they were about to find out. During the chats, Pepe made it clear that he not only wanted to date, but also teach the girl some much needed lessons of adulthood. Yes, he volunteered to be her private tutor and was very happy to share his expertise for free. To confirm the date, the girl tried contacting him over the phone just to stir things up, but Pepe refused to talk. After several attempts, Pepe finally received the call, but he chose to be mum. Now, this one was turning out to be one hell of an intriguing personality. The team had no idea what to expect, and so they went ahead and zeroed in on a date to call him over. And surprisingly, Pepe agreed. What was all the animosity about then? Anyway, so the dude finally reached the sting house and started to loiter around the property, and everything about what you're about to see next is downright weird. Hey, I'm in here! Do it again. Hey, Pepe, come on in! This loser was just hanging by the entrance and not making any move, although the girl kept calling out to him. The team urged the girl to come over once again just to help him snap out of daydreaming. But once again, no response. He just stood there. But that does not mean he was suspicious. He actually looked very eager to meet the girl. So what the hell was holding him back? Did the girl have to actually roll out a red carpet for him? Or was he just trying to contemplate the situation so he could bounce if he had to? Finally, the girl decided to give him what he wants, a sweet welcome. Hey, come on in! Come on in! Finally, after like almost half an hour of trying to get him inside the house, all the effort paid off. Pepe sported this really stupid grin on his face, and he was probably already thinking about the long night that he had ahead of him. Just seeing the girl had triggered all of his senses, and since he had already wasted enough time, Chris decided to end his happiness by showing up. Of course, Pepe was shocked to see Chris, but it was Chris who was more shocked to find out Pepe's little secret. Come on, please have a seat right here. No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. No wonder it took him forever to respond. This dude was deaf. But just look at him, you guys. Not a single hint of guilt or remorse or fear or nothing. He was actually smiling. Like, who is this guy? I get it, he's deaf and all, but where the heck is common sense? How on earth did he think it was okay to come over and meet a girl for purposes he shouldn't even be thinking about? But look at the confidence he steps inside the house with and his dedication, too. He actually didn't mind waiting, even if it would take hours for the girl to show up. Look, I know you're a special case, Pepe, and you'd be exempt from a lot of things in daily life but not for committing such a heinous crime. This act of yours isn't going to go unpunished. Although Chris tried to hold him back, the man had already made up his mind. Pepe was probably like, hey man, nice meeting you. I'm out of here, bye. Short and sweet, and he headed straight out of the exit. He didn't even give Chris the opportunity to talk to him, or even pull up a few placards to communicate with him. It looks like the production team would have to next time anything have an alternative solution to such encounters. But who'd even thought about it? Pepe's arrival has definitely left the team a lot to think about. Losers could come in any way or form. If they could be deaf, they could also be blind or specially abled or anything else. But it's the thought that counts. Those nasty thoughts that reside in the minds of such lowlifes, and that's just upsetting. Pepe probably thought he'd made a clean escape when he flashed that dirty face of his at Chris and walked right out. Pepe was having the most casual walk of his life and had just entered the driveway when this happened. Get down! Get down! Um, is that protocol, or did the cops actually call out to a deaf guy? Probably it's just out of habit, I guess. Either way, what's important is that they were able to pin him down. And whether he heard it or not, I'm glad he felt it. Jose Falcon, that's Pepe's real name, by the way, was charged with obscene communication for using a computer to do some really lewd acts. 
Although he left on bail, the 44-year-old, yep, he wasn't even 27 like he'd earlier claimed, Pepe was eventually sentenced to nine months in prison and three years as a registered offender. This jerk was released in 2007, and I hope he has enough sense to not repeat such a stupid thing again. But this guy right here blurted out one of the hardest confessions ever heard on the show, and what he said is not only embarrassing, but also upsetting. Clinton! How was the drive? Okay. Walking up the driveway here is our next loser for today, James Cisneros, and this guy's chat logs were absolutely disgusting. But do you think it's just about the chat logs? This man is crazier than you think. This bozo literally asked the girl if she could sneak out of the house, hitch a ride with him to a motel room, and then sneak right back in, all in a jiffy. But here comes the most shocking part. This dude pitched this idea knowing very well that the girl's mom was still at home. The nerve on this man! Can anyone be this desperate? And not to forget that he was expecting all this from someone who was clearly very young. This weirdo had a ton of ideas on his mind, and since the girl didn't agree to step out, he decided to step in. So I made a drink. I don't know if you want to try it or not. It's Kool-Aid. Well, this is the same man who had earlier in the chats had gone to great lengths to find out more about the girl's experience and her liking, how she liked it, where she liked it, and things like that. The man, whose screen name was way too graphic to be shared, had come prepared with whatever he needed to see him throughout the day. But what he ever so confidently whips out of his pocket leaves the entire crew stunned. Sweet. Where you want to Yep, this sicko had actually brought along a whole bunch of skins. You see, protection is of key importance, but guess what's even more important? To consider the age of the person you'd be using it with. You know what, James, just shove that thing right back into your pants for now, and your big Joe as well. Because there's no way either of them would be put to good use today, especially since this is what happened next. Please have a seat. Why? Have a seat. I'm Chris Hansen. So where's all the confidence gone now, huh? When Chris brought up the online chats, this bozo started to deny all of it. Guess he didn't know Chris actually had the transcripts on him. But who are you trying to fool anyway? When the whole matter of the girl's age was brought up, James pulled off his first ever audition into Hollywood. <laughs> but guess what? His acting sucked big time. Although he kept insisting that the girl never mentioned her age, his eyes had already given it away. The man was dying inside. But when Chris pulled out the transcripts, the weirdo did something unexpected. Did he just say bye before walking out? Well, it's gonna be a bye for sure, but at least wait for Chris to finish his iconic reveal. <sighs> Maybe another time. As for now, James was so embarrassed that he could not stand in the midst of Chris anymore. And as soon as he left the house, this is what happens. <laughs> Yes, well, that had to happen someday. But before moving on to the next weirdo, let me show you a clip of James, which might be one of the most honest confessions I've ever heard on the show. While the cops were interrogating him, James admitted to the hardest truth ever when he said this. You don't think about the age. You just think about doing it. That pretty much sums up the thought process of every idiot who shows up at the sting house. But this next weirdo is so pathetic that you just have to look at him once to get annoyed. But what he said was even more weird. I don't know what's your last name. I don't have a last name. This guy right here is Brian Goslin. And don't tell me his appearance doesn't send chills down your spine. There's something about that hair, dude. It just screams out trouble. The more I look at him, the more I'm convinced that this bozo was definitely BS. Well, I know I wouldn't want to be around someone like this, but I'm more than glad that he got hooked on to the crew's elaborate plan to catch weirdos like him. When the mudhead entered the house, he thought he'd hit the jackpot. The man hadn't even met the girl yet, and he was already sizing up the place. Kidding when you said a big house. I know, the house is beautiful. I love my house. Yeah. Well, this guy was smitten. He obviously felt lucky to hook up with the girl, but how about doing it in a house as lavish as this? Now that's one hell of a treat he'd not even asked for. Now this loser was probably thinking of sketching a bigger plan. Like, not just leave it to a one-time thing, and probably this is why he asked this. Oh, did you bring, did you bring protection? Yeah. Okay, I'm sort of getting annoyed with the way he replies every time. So let me just cut the crap and head into the biggest confrontation ever. Bad news about that is you're probably not going to need that type of protection tonight. 
Ta-da! Enter Chris. But Mr. Weirdo wasn't the least bit bothered. Apparently, he knew it was a setup. So why did you even come, huh? To get arrested? Or to just get your five minutes of fame on TV? But you know what? His eyes spoke volumes. Take a look at this next interaction between him and Chris and tell me what you think. I know what's your last name. I don't have a last name. You don't have a last name. Damn, this guy is the perfect vision of a demon. What else do you think made him speak to the girl like the way he did in the chats? This loser definitely had some psychological triggers. Apparently, when the girl acted up like she lost interest in him during the chats, the man turned aggressive. Not only that, he had the most strange way to woo a girl. While most men promise stars and castles, this one said he'd eat dog poop just to please her. Well, you don't have to eat it, my man. You already look like it, you skunk. I'm sure Chris had a ton of questions for this guy. But this piece of trash decided to bail out. But you know he's not going to get far, right? Brian was picked up by the cops waiting for him right outside the door. Yeah. And although I would have wanted him to stay behind bars for longer, this sicko got away because the production crew couldn't hand over enough evidence in time for the hearing. And that's embarrassing. But this next bozo might look really dumb. But don't go by his looks because this one actually did something that was thought to be impossible. Six feet of you eight feet of you. This tiny little man running towards the sting house is Michael Saber. And look at that excitement on his face. Woohoo! Someone's looking forward to a really steamy night. While most men walk towards the house, this one was in some kind of a rush. He literally sprinted towards the entrance. But little did he know that all of his plans would be dashed in just a few minutes. Right off the bat, as soon as he entered the house, this weirdo rushed to the bathroom. Well, no wonder he was in a hurry. But before he could even get there and relieve himself, Chris walked right in. Come on over here for a minute, please. Huh? Oops? What do you mean, oops, you pea brain? From there on, Michael came across as someone who had just been struck with lightning and the purest form of wisdom. He said that he was very well aware of what he'd done and also went on to promise that he'd never, ever do it again. For some reason, Chris didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on this guy. Or maybe another jerk was lined up right behind this one and they had to clear the way out for him. Either way, Chris dismissed him way earlier than you'd think he would. And just as you'd expect, this sicko who apparently suffered seizures from a near-fatal fall he had in his childhood was picked up by the cops. It's sad to see that he'd already gone on through so much in his life, but this kind of attitude is just not acceptable. On further investigation, Michael was found guilty and sentenced to 18 months in prison, but nobody had a clue that the man had no plans of adhering to his sentence. Forget about this sentence. Eight months later, Michael broke the promise he made to Chris. He resurfaced on the chat once again. I've seen a ton of men who go to the extent of even changing their names after getting caught in a sting operation as public as this, but Michael didn't give a damn. He was back to chatting with girls looking for a date, all while still using the same screen name as before. Although he was a little cautious this time around, he wasn't going to get away with it anyway. For some reason, this dude thought it was okay to brag about how he got caught earlier and even brought it up during the chat. The two anyway end up picking up a day for their rendezvous, but this sicko had to give it a pass because he had a court hearing to attend. Yep, it was the same hearing from the Riverside Sting he was caught in eight months earlier. The very next day, Michael was at the Sting house. Another day, another setup, another girl, but the same old disgusting man. Michael entered the house with a hell of a lot of enthusiasm and excitement, but once inside, Chris decided to say hello. You know, you look familiar to me. Oops, watch it. Oops, you've done it again. Like I said, same intention and the same reaction, same TV show, and the same six foot tall man's interruption. But this time around, hopefully there's no escaping. But Michael knew the drill. He just threw his hands up and promised to not do it again. Once again. But it's not that simple now, is it? So Michael decided to complicate things. There's the drama you're all looking for. It looks like this guy had a really crazy turn on. He probably got aroused when he got caught. Why else do you think he'd be here time and again just to get caught, or was he just so dumb that he couldn't figure it out? Either way, that's just embarrassing. Getting caught twice in a row, and that too when your hearing is still in progress? Michael was apparently also charged with going after someone with a bat. Ooh, that's crazy. Well, the crew was just lucky enough to nab this guy once again. Guys, I wouldn't want to be even in the same room as this guy. Like, I can smell him through my screen, and let me tell you, it's definitely not a good thing. Ugh, it's like if baloney and mold had a love child. Child. Anyway, before the guy even entered the house, the cops rounded him up and arrested him. Now, you must be thinking, where's my boy Chris? 
Well, sadly, he was busy with something else, and they had to rush him before anything more could happen. Well, like all these sorts of dudes who have been on the show, he basically rushed off to the police station for interrogation. And right when he sat down, do change personalities like you or I change shirts, and this new persona sure loved excuses. What he came up with was simply unbelievable. My best friend's mom is dying of cancer. That's not a real excuse for it, but... Yeah. Yeah, you're damn right it's no excuse. Like, come on, man. Seriously, dude, if he said it was his own mom who wasn't well, maybe we'd have some sympathy. But lying about his best friend's mom? A step too far. I bet that poor lady was just fine at home, chilling, and now she's probably stressed because of this jerk's lame attempt to weasel out of trouble. Not cool, Edward. Not cool at all. But the gravity of the situation was quick to dawn on him. Like, he suddenly realized he messed up big time, and duh, you're right on the money, but it's a little too late for you to feel bad about it, you big old chunk. Maybe you could have felt bad before you got to the house, turned around, and took a long look in the mirror. A very big mirror on that. Here's some much needed wisdom, idiot. No matter what sort of messed up fantasies you got swimming around that in that head of yours, bringing them out in real life is beyond disgusting. I mean, what was he thinking when he struck up a convo with a person like the setup? Dude sealed his fate as soon as he sent the first message, and he got exactly what he deserved. Sorry, no matter what happens to him, he's getting no sympathy from me. And the people in the comments literally took the words out of my mouth. One guy commented saying how fantasies become realities when you make the decision to get in the car and drive all the way to a place you really shouldn't be. What I tell you guys, this loser really thought the cops would just buy a stupid excuse, and don't even get me started on his fave crying. Just look at this. Again, fantasy takes of reality. I've never done really anything. You should have just given up this sort of life and gone to acting school, since that's about the only thing he's done right up at this point. Dude's gunning for an Oscar to put up this sort of act, but sadly ain't no rewards to be found here. Well, unless you count the cuffs on him as an award. I know, I sure do. But this next comment I came across was all I needed for validation, honestly. That whole, my best friend's mom is dying of cancer bit is cringier than everything else combined. You can hear it in his voice, man. He's been rehearsing that line in his head the entire way to the police station. Well, let's leave everybody's favorite Oscar nominee behind. Who's ready for excuse number two? Well, our next weirdo for today is Christopher Urban. Absolute audacity of this guy. As soon as he entered the house, this absolute monster felt so at home that he straight up went ahead and started washing his hands and stuff. Like, no hesitation at all. Makes you wonder how many freaking times he's done this before to be so calm and composed, especially at some random stranger's house. Also, especially a place with someone like the setup around. Thankfully, this time things were about to play out differently than he expected. Paper towels right over here. Oh, I grab a paper That's classic Chris for ya. I mean, there's just something about his entrance. You can't explain what, but whatever it was, he nailed it. Imagine being at a house to meet this chick and this man who you think could be your dad, and he shows up and hands you a paper towel. That's gotta be emasculating as hell. Dude's life probably flashed before his eyes, too. I mean, why else do you think he took forever to wipe his hands? He went on and on and on, and Hanson finally lost his patience and asked him this. Chris. Chris. Yeah. And who did you come to see? Yeah, he had to start somewhere. If not, this prick would have probably rubbed his hands clean down to the bone. When he finally answered... Way too young for you. Yeah. Then why did you come here? No shit, Sherlock. I mean, wow. Picture perfect gentleman over here, you guys. Do wanted Hanson to believe that he came all this way just to remind the setup that he was too old for her. Uh-huh. Sure. Talk about meaning that could have been an email. Would have saved him some gas, some time, effort, and uh, oh yeah, jail time as well. But hey, that's the beginning of his stupidity. That's because when Chris asked him to take the skins out of his pocket, which you let me remind you, he denied having him in the first place, dude had something else planned out. I brought this, but this is really watered down. You can even test it. <laughs> That's way watered down. Way watered down. Way watered down. What, watered down. what is it? You can see how hard he was trying to sell what he was doing. He had all the grace of a used car salesman, but good effort, buddy. Obviously, Chris wasn't convinced, which is why he came up with his next excuse. And trust me, I haven't seen anything like it on the show before. Hey, look at me. I didn't even take a shower. If I was coming to do something like that, I would have, I would have taken a shower. You know. I mean, that's, that's the first thing you Yeah, he actually said that. Now, I have no idea if he was telling the truth or not, but that was one hell of a way to convince Chris. And trust me, listening to this, a ton of fans of the show had the laugh of their lives. Look at me! I'm so dirty. Lamau. Yeah, I agree on that one. Chris was so amused that he actually had to ask how old he was after listening to that ridiculous excuse. And just like you expected, Christopher went on and 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 on. He desperately tried every trick of the trade to clear his name. I did because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I didn't want somebody to be absolutely hurt, okay? And sit there and go, oh my gosh, you didn't show up. Oh, 
so suddenly you're worried about someone else's feelings now, huh? Well, I'd say better late than never, but we both know it's far too late. Come on, Chris, we know you're shitting bricks, so why don't you own up and get done with it instead of making a mess of yourself? However, Christopher continued to rant and explain how he was someone who believed in conscience and would never do something crazy with the setup. Anyway, by the time Chris realized that our man of the hour would never snap out of his denial, he decided to finally reveal his true identity to him. And with that, the cameras popped out and Christopher had nowhere left to run. Welcome to leave and take your stuff with please. you. But if there's anything else you'd like to say, um, please. He desperately tried to cover his face, but again, at too little, at too late. In hindsight, just like this viewer right here, I also think Christopher displayed every stage of excuses, defensiveness, guilt, and finally pleading his case. Fun to watch, but again, it's not gonna get the guy anywhere. Bye bye Christopher. You give all the other Chris's of the world a bad name. I bet our Chris wasn't too pleased having to deal with a namesake like this guy. But we've only scratched the surface of the depths of stupidity we're going to be delving into. This next guy's a prime example since he couldn't come up with anything else but this. You know that the house is for sale? Oh, that this house is for sale? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. When nothing else is selling, what better than to put the Sting house on sale? I'm sure Chris never saw that coming, and he was so surprised that he had to ask him this. What made you thought that this house is for sale? I heard about it. There he goes again. So, this guy, Aladdin Shimon, had the audacity to blame some friend of his who led him to believe that this house was on sale. Like, yeah right, completely believable. Do you see any realtors around here? No. But hey, Chris wasn't backing down. Wanted to get to the bottom of it and test Aladdin's creativity. However, every single explanation that Aladdin gave landed him in deeper and deeper trouble. Yes. And what's the friend's name? His name is Hisham. And what's his phone number? Surprisingly, Alanin did manage to come up with a phone number, and it was pulled out of his ass, sure, but gotta hand it to the guy. What did Chris do? Dialed it up right in front of the dude. I'm sure this prick never saw that coming. Uh, hopefully. Okay, well that first one is Cynthia, it's not Hisham. Okay, so. so let's try the other yeah. one. You could feel Aladdin's tension a mile away. The man was sweating bullets knowing his big fat line was about to be busted. <coughs> And I have no idea whose number he actually gave out, but to add insult to injury, nobody answered the call. Going by the look on his face, it seems that he knew he was dead to rights from the second Chris pulled out his phone. But with that sorry display out of the way, Chris wanted some real answers. And what would you think of the house? What did you say? What do you think of the house? Very nice. Yeah. And how many of it on four? By this time, Chris realized that Aladdin could go on forever with this little act, and so he decided to ask him one more time. I think now is the time for you to tell the truth. <laughs> Why did you really come here? Uh, to see, uh, what's her name, uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yes. And then came the truth. See, it only took that much to get it out of him. And just when you thought he'd cooperate, Aladdin blew everyone away with yet another award-winning performance. You say, great, good girl. Ah, the drama. Dude's taking a page out of the sitcom playbook, I see. Bold strategy, too. I mean, how else do you think he came up with the idea of pulling this sort of stunt? How convenient, ain't it? Just pass out. Dudes crack the code. Call off the cops, you guys. Aladdin's won. He can't go on no more. But seriously, his fake faint was so terrible that I couldn't help but cringe. I'm honestly disappointed in him for not coming up with a better escape plan. Like, Duke could have some decency and at least try to make a run for it. Anyway, they gave him some water and surprise, surprise, he was miraculously all better. But Chris kept drilling in with questions without skipping a be like a bloodhound following a trail. But Aladdin, well, he really thought he'd pull off a master escape. But oh, how wrong he was. Chris ain't letting him off the hook that easy. And you won't believe it, this loser pulled the same stunt again. Like, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. But guess what? Chris didn't even blink and kept firing away with questions. Ah, what a character this guy was. Dude can't be real. Ah, uh, it's just... Yeah, it looks like Aladdin was hit with some kind of fast onset narcolepsy that kept sending him into these fainting spells. And what was Chris up to while this was going? Well, his reaction was priceless. He was so unbothered by the drama unfolding before his eyes and was like, come on, man, get it out. And really, can you blame him? Aladdin's bizarre acting was comical. Like, he could have performed with the best slapstick actors around. Like, get this guy and Charlie Chaplin in a room together, seriously. He kept up that little activist till the bitter end. But guess what? Everyone could see through his BS. 
And oh, the internet had a blast with this one. People love seeing these dudes floundering around to try and get out of trouble as it is, but this guy was next level. Whether it worked in his favor or not, he had fans of the show laughing right away. One of my fave dumbass excuses predators. Thank you for giving me a laugh at the end of a long day at work. Some viewers also enjoyed how Aladdin really stalled the whole sting, expecting some genie to appear out of nowhere and rescue him. But hey, he wasn't entirely wrong, because there indeed was a bunch of genies waiting for him right outside the door. And that realization must have hit him real hard. Unlike this next guy who had a hard on like no other. You see, Chuck Harding, and no, I'm not making the last name of his up, found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. We'll check around here, okay? Hey, how are you? Okay. Why don't you have a seat right around that stool there for And hey, looks like Aladdin was the only one interested in real estate. Uh, possibly selling the house or something. Selling the house? Yeah, I have a problem here was that Chuck couldn't make up his mind. His story got so twisted in so many ways that I don't even think he could even remember where he began. Somebody get this guy working at one of those mall pretzel stands. He'd fit right in. Now, I don't blame his age for the lapse in memory because Chuck was in his prime when it came to some of the disgusting things he was into. And while he sat there spinning lies over lies, Chris threw his absolute disaster of a cover story in the trash right from the beginning. Now, help me understand this. Why would anyone want to go into an online chat room, which was meant for a specific purpose that definitely wasn't selling houses to sell his house? I mean, they got Realtor.com for that, right? Well, let's not be too hard on Hard Chuck, and yeah, that was one of his many screen names, can't say I'm surprised, because the dude was so engrossed in his explicit conversations that he didn't even realize what kind of real estate he was looking for. Yeah, and how, how much are you selling it for? $25,000. $25,000, that's quite the bargain. I know, right? Props for sticking to your guns, Chuck, but like, come on. Chris, on the other hand, waited and watched on. He only wanted to see how far Chucky Boy would spin his web of lies before he cracked and came clean. However, Chuck showed no signs of stopping, and that's when Chris decided to take charge. The only problem with that story is, is that I have the transcripts of your conversation with Luke. Despite Chris showing him enough evidence to get him convicted six ways to Sunday, Chuck couldn't stop himself from giving more and more ridiculous excuses. Well, I have another person that uses my computer. Another person. Right. Come on, Grandpa. Seriously? I mean, you can't even keep track of all the lies here. Or just cut the shit and come clean. But Chuck was in no mood to confess. However, he did share what he did for a living. What do you do for a living, Chuck? I'm retired now. You're retired. Although he was retired, the man was anything but tired. You see, Chuck was pretty busy throughout his life. He worked as a travel agent for 13 years, flew high with Frontier Airlines for nearly two decades, drove buses for the elderly and handicapped for five years, tried his luck teaching freshmen in high school, did a stint with the Catholic Church for two and a half years, and even served in the Air Force for four years. Oh, dude definitely had a wide portfolio, I'll tell you that much. But man, I feel so sorry for this grandpa, honestly. At an age where he should be enjoying his retirement with grandkids, he was trying to get into the pants of people around the same age as his grandkids. And guess what? After three little follow-up questions from Chris, the truth finally came out. Well, we were almost there, but not quite. It was like pulling teeth to get to the real story from this guy, I swear. But leave it to the GOAT to finally get the job done. Well, he was in the chat room, so... Excuse, but he at least accepted it was him who was chatting. While Chuck tried his best to deflect, this next guy had the curiosity of a cat. And I mean, you know what they say about that. And why do I say that? Well, check this out. It's a girl. I don't know how old, that's why I'm here. I'm just. Ah, uh, this big loser. Just trying to play it cool, saying he was curious about the person he was gonna meet. Yeah, right, like we're gonna buy that excuse. I mean, seriously, I don't think he could have come up with a more ridiculous story. But wait, gets even juicier. He had the guts to not even deny that he was having these filthy convos with random folks online. Oh, unfortunately for us, his Playboy days wouldn't last for much longer. He was gonna get caught sooner or later, and man, that is a piece of work that he was. However, Chris ended up nailing him. When he confronted him, the guy couldn't come up with squat. Not surprising at all, really. And get this, his lame response did the work spilling the beans for him, and now Chris got all the dirty needed to send that fool straight to prison. Good riddance, buddy. Well, yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely. Right. I mean, why take the chance? Yeah, exactly, why take the chance, am I right? You have so much free time in your life and you just wanna see how your luck plays out? What? Well, it looks like his luck ran out. Might be the first, but out of all the losers we've seen on the show, Dan might be the first one who wanted to apologize. You'd go, okay, you know what, maybe this is all just a misunderstanding, but what he said right after that changed my whole opinion about him. It's just sad to think that he thought he had it in the bag until this very next moment when he threatened the camera crew. Ah, well, you better, I'll shove that camera down his throat. I don't think you're gonna wanna do that. Why is that? 
absolute state of this loser. Who does he think he is talking like that, especially where he's at? Honestly, that's the exact reason why he deserved to be in prison for far longer. People on the internet were going absolute ham on this guy. Take a look at these comments. I'd like to say that pretty much I think you have it all wrong, but your point's well taken. This is the perfect example of a guy who should have just said nothing at all. Pretty sure he lost about 10 IQ points purely from being within this schmuck's radius. Honestly, I think I'm starting to lose some IQ at this point. That's why I'm here, I'm just curious. The way he delivers that line is so perfect. It's not the funniest part, but it's absolutely the thing that keeps me coming back here. You see, he was just curious, guys. Nothing else, definitely nothing else to see here, folks. Move along. But he for sure will shove a camera down your throat if you even ask him anything else. Now we got one last absolutely idiotic escapade coming our way. Rob Klein might not seem that old, but he was definitely a beast online, no doubt. The things he said on the internet were so disgusting that I'm not going to be able to repeat them here. I'm sure that gives you all the context you'll need. But back to the episode, where this loser's dream of getting right to business was shattered when Chris came out and asked him why it was there. And you know what he said? Well, it's really not that complicated, actually. He just came over to inform the setup that, uh, well, he wasn't gonna come over. Yeah, I know, I'm as stunned and silent as the rest of you. I'm not making this up, you guys. This was actually his excuse. Don't believe me? Roll the clip. I was actually just gonna stop by here to let her know that I wasn't gonna be here because I have to go meet with other people. Told ya. Think about it. He drove all the way here just to say that he had other plans with his friend. And here I thought Christopher Urban was the king of meetings that could have been an email. But Rob Klein's got him beat by a mile. And this viewer had pretty much the same idea. Not just that, as soon as the cameras came out, this loser actually held his hand out for a handshake. Like, nothing actually happened, but talk about being delusional as hell. What's more, the exchange Chris had with him as he was leaving the house honestly gave me a headache. I can see why it's hard to believe. I can see myself why it's hard to believe. So why should I believe you? Ugh, that smirk on his face. I'd like to punch it off of him and wipe it off him. But this loser's story doesn't even end there. Back at one of the station's interrogation rooms, the cops asked him if he had ever shared any explicit videos from his laptop. And you know what he said? Not as far as I know. But in the event that the officers do find something, they should keep something in mind. Maybe it was his brother who did it. Yeah, why not? Just push everyone under the bus on your way to hell, why don't ya? This dude's definitely in the running for the Brother of the Year award. But seriously, what he had to say here kind of triggered siblings from all around the world. Imagine finding out your brother got arrested for this and then trying to blame it on you. The amount of excuses these losers can come up with on the spot is honestly kind of shocking. Thankfully, none of them are ever any good at it. But there's more where this came from. If you can think of any other ridiculous excuses I left out, don't forget to drop them in the comments below. And before you head out, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, if you want to see something even crazier, check out my latest video right here. See you all next time.